Three of the eleventh hour to go to where on Friday the eighth of the third eighty five. Take the line. Much, much more tonight, live on the 11th hour. From Afghanistan to Argentina, from Lebanon to Laos, it's time to sit back and relax for World of War. Hockey said we hope you to BMX, and now Ronnie Reagan's pulled his rank. They all want to test their missiles, but for my part, give me another Hutton's footy, Frank. Over to you, Sandy. I love you. Mm. Thank you very much, Douglas, and welcome to another World of War. Well, it's been a big week this week on the war front, and we've got a big show for you. All the details from the minor skirmishes to all the major war results. We've got all the usual segments. What's your decision? Meet the coaches. TNT action of the day and plenty more. We'll be crossing live after the game for the Army Reserve Cup. But first, here's Freddie Villiers with the results. Thanks, Freddie. Well, this week I've seen some exciting clashes, a few upsets, but on the whole, no change in the leaders. Well, let's look at the scores. Vietnam defeated Kampuchea 1-0. Israel versus Syria, a one-all draw. Iraq, Iran, a no-score draw. The USA is still trouncing Nicaragua with a massive 15-5 lead. And I must say, the Sandinista boys are really going to have to pull their socks up if they're going to make it to the final round. Ethiopia, Eritrea. Well, Eritrea went down 5-1, and the big game in Queensland against the rest of the world was called off. Your War Lotto coupon should look something like this. And now it's time to meet the coaches to discuss last decade's big clash between the USA and former minor league team North Vietnam. Here's former coach of the USA, Billy Westmoreland, and the coach of the Moscow Reds, Bear Gromico. Well, it was a home and away game for both sides in Vietnam. Conditions extremely steamy out there. The USA opened up well, but just couldn't sustain it. Bill, what went wrong? Well, we weren't really good enough on the day. Sandy North played better, more faster, and quite frankly, we couldn't catch them. Billy, I thought your front line troops let you down badly. You were getting the supplies up there, but you just couldn't convert it all. Yeah, a real disappointment there, Sandy. Uh, we'll be looking into that with the selectors during the week. Bear, uh, I, thought, uh, I thought you opened up a little slowly there. Is that a worry for you? It's a bit of a worry for us, Sandy, but we've got plenty more games in the season. Well, Westy it, uh... says you were better on the day. Uh, mm. I thought uh, you played particularly well. The new boys from the Viet Cong in particular, but some of the older fellas let you mm. down. Is that a worry? Yes, we're looking at a strong recruitment uh, program from the third world now, Sandy. Yeah. Westy, the million dollar question, did you miss your big guns? Well, Sandy, I don't want to have to go Well, into... I know Jack will agree with me on this one, but I, I just want to put it to you. A bit of that old A-bomb magic from 1945 wouldn't have gone astray. Now, look here, I don't want to take anything away from Vietnam's win here. But if we had had our nuclear weapons, it may have been a different story on the, on the day, Sandy. <laughs> You don't know who your, uh, your opponents are for next week. Probably someone from the Middle East. How are you going to go? We'll be in there trying, Sandy. Of course you will. Bear, Bill, thanks for coming in and joining us. Louis's got a couple yeah. of gifts for you here. Yeah. Look at that. You've got the Hutton Footy oh, yeah. Frank, the Tosca travel bags, and lots, lots yeah. more. Thanks for coming in. Well, yeah. right Louis, how you doing? <laughs> you know, these two Exocet missiles are a beauty. They've been friends of ours here at World of War for years now. And I've still got to say that a go anywhere, do anything missile. Whether you want to sink a ship or simply put a bloody big hole in the city, you can't go past Exocet. E X O C E T. E X O C E T. Exocet. You can hand a man a grand missile. Now it's time for the TNT action of the day, and the $400 gift batch from Katie's going to the side with the of the day and believe me there was plenty of action in last week's round let's take a look at some of it 
Afghanistan, Lebanon, El Salvador and the Persian Gulf. But the judges' decision there going to the USSR and Coach Bear Gromyko will be walking away with a $400 gift voucher from Katie's there. Well done. Well, that's it for another edition of World of War. Don't forget to join us next week for an even bigger show. Plus, we'll have the final of the Australian Hand Grenade Handball Championship. In the meantime, watch out for our live telecast during the week of a continuing match between the IRA and the RUC from Belfast. Uh, the Margaret Thatcher uh, versus the uh, British Trade Union big game. And of course, New Caledonia versus the Canucks Little League. Till then, goodbye from a world of war. Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Mark Mitchell. And it's great to have your company on this, the special Moomba edition of the 11th hour. And speaking of Moomba, we're going to be in the procession on Monday on the Channel 7 float, naturally. And if, if you'd like to come up and say hello, or if you'd like an autograph of any of the Channel 7 personalities, just see us and, and we'll ask them for you. <laughs> if, if you'd like to be in the, in the studio audience for the 11th hour, just uh, contact our producer. Uh, the producer, care of HSV7, I beg your pardon, the producer of the 11th hour, here of HSV7, Dorcas Street, South Melbourne. You may remember on last week's show I invited people to, uh, to write to me, and sure enough, someone did. <laughs> this letter arrived during the week, and I was, uh, I was just delighted to, to receive one. I'll be, um, I'll be reading that, uh, or parts thereof, to you uh, a little bit later in the show. Uh, but right now, to start the ball rolling the right way, we're going to cross to Steve and all the gang for the 11th hour news update. Monday, the Victorian Labor Party celebrates winning its first consecutive term in office. John Kane forsakes the campaign trail to return to the battles of the caucus room. Defeated opposition leader Jeff Kennett has only this to say. I can't understand. <laughs> Tuesday. Today, Britain's economic crisis reached a new low. Britain was rocked by the news that the Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen registered for unemployment benefits. <laughs> Later, the Queen said that the people at the Labour Exchange were extremely nice, but she had trouble filling out some of the forms. <laughs> Wednesday, one of the biggest court cases in Victoria's history opens. Mr. Alan Medic of Glen Waverley sues the Melway Street Directory Company for damages following a misprint on page 98. Thursday, a major upset as an unknown entrant scoops the first prize in the Miss Australia quest. <laughs> Officials ask that a swab be taken. Friday, and in another first, young Bruno McCorkle of Carnegie is voted the world's ugliest baby. Both parents are delighted, but young Bruno thinks he looks just like Dad. Oh, I beg your pardon, I didn't realise I was on, uh, on camera. I was watching the, uh, the monitor. Uh, I do apologise for that. I, I'm, I'm very sorry, and I mean that very sincerely. Uh, we'll be back with more for you in just a moment, but first, here's an important message. When they get going, nothing can stand in their way. They're dynamic. They're unstoppable. They're a four-man army against the bot. They're the AA team, and they're the greatest force against Boo since Elliot Ness. Wherever there's a drink problem, they'll be there. They're coming your way every Tuesday night with the incredible Mr. DT. Please, okay. Do it! The AA team coming your way soon on 7. Don't let me catch you drinking, sucker! And now, the age syndrome. It's now over two years since this deadly disease was first identified in the USA. Since then, the incidence of the disease has continued to increase with no sign of abating, the AGE syndrome. Over the last few years, medical research establishments in the US have been working overtime to find a remedy for the dreaded syndrome. Their efforts were spurred on recently 
by the discovery that one of their leading statesmen was suffering from the disease, which is seriously impairing his ability to make rational, informed decisions. Now the disease has reached epidemic proportions in Australia, and some authorities estimate that by the year 2000, 60% of the population will be suffering from age. In its early stages, the disease is characterised by a slight hardening of the oh, attitudes. You know, say, take unemployment. I know it's really, it's really bad, and uh, I know times are tougher since when I was a student last year, but really, I reckon a lot of them could go and find jobs. It's not that hard, you just got to get out there and look. I think there's a lot of jobs around, and really, it's our taxes at work, or it would be if it wasn't from the Parents' Family Trust. And, I don't know. It just annoys me that we have to pay for it. I mean, you take uranium, right? I think we should be selling it. Now, I don't like uranium. I don't think anybody does. But if we don't sell it, someone else will. In its advanced stages, it leads to loss of hair, wrinkling of skin, and total resistance to all changes in daily routine. Remarkably, one state of Australia has more than its fair share of age sufferers. In recent years, Queensland has gained a reputation as the nation's age capital. Some people blame it on the climate, others on a hedonistic lifestyle. Yet others blame it on permissive government policies. As far as I'm concerned, this age syndrome is just God's way of punishing these people who come up here, turn their back on the Christian work ethic and drop out in some tawdry little flat in uh, Mermaid Beach or Casablanca or such, some such. You see them up here every day on the Broadway, kissing and cuddling and uh, as far as I'm concerned, these public displays of affection by age victims are just deplorable. And the Queensland Government has done nothing but encourage the situation with their, with their abolition of death duty. I mean, I have statutory evidence that old people, age victims, are coming up here and dying just to avoid paying taxes. As far as I'm concerned, they're just death bludgers. Or is it that they gain hope from the Queensland Premier, himself an age victim? While in most cases the disease is fatal, he looks like going on forever. That report from Derek Scone. And now to sport. We've got some very interesting sporting events for you today. I don't understand so where you are. I'm sick and tired of being rusted on in the middle of the bloody three. night. I do. And I don't think they appreciate our services. No, I went up and I told them, I said, that's enough. And then they told me to bugger off. I'm sick to death of it, I tell you. And I'll tell you another thing. I don't think this bloody show's funny at all. All right, not a patch on Willie Connolly. You're not you. wrong. I mean, these people are too bloody and inhi inhibited and middle class. You know, Aye. Billy Connolly shows people the way they really are. Aye, what's and all? Aye, Aye. you're not wrong again, Joe, yeah. I tell you. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the Billy Connolly routine I like. I like it when he goes into the right. lobby, right. he grabs his willy and then he goes... Oh, <laughs> I really oh, like that one. I'll <laughs> tell you my favourite one. I'll tell you when he goes in the lobby and he throws up. <laughs> oh, Christ, oh, which it. one is that? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> I'll tell you what I like the best, my absolute top favourite. I like the one when he goes in the lobby, he goes <laughs> and then he goes <laughs> and then he slams his willy on the lobby lid. Oh, I just Jesus that. Christ! <laughs> I'll tell you something, you can really see yourself in Billy Connolly. You're not wrong, John, you're not wrong. I've got the chairs around the wrong way. <laughs> Welcome you to the wide world of sports live coverage of the big one, the one we've been waiting for the game of the decade. Both sides must win. All eyes will be focused on that man, Steve Garrett, the man with the high average, the 1 2.3 rookie of the year. Ready, go. He's loaded, he's looking good with a 3.1 strike average ratio in the 84th season for the Pro Bowl, NFL, USA, All American, Southern State Conference statistics. What a score rate, what a man. Talk averages, you talk statistics. When you talk 6.13 coming up to the 83 84 season, and that's no hit, no misses, you're talking that man, Steve Steve Garrett, probably the hottest property since the 26th season, rookie of the year, 39, he came on a statistic average and loaded once. That meant big trouble for the Buffaloes. If ever they had to do something on the 129 is this is the day and this is the time. They can do it with that man, Steve Garrett, loaded, ready to go. He's been off at Big Bickies with a 597 contract, probably the biggest pro contract in the history of the game. Averaging 5.93 per game, strike rate loaded on fourth and still going, those statistics speak for themselves. For the 9713 coming to the 83-84 strike rate season, Success rate, hit rate, we'll have to let the critics talk about that one. And now let's cross back to the commentary position for this big all-in. 
important game of... What the hell are they playing today, Mac? What game... Mac, what game are they playing? This show is out of control. Friends. Yeah, it really needs direction. Yeah. You know what this show really lacks? Women? No, guts. Oh, same diff. I mean, there's no shock value. Yeah. Wish they'd swear or something. Or just do something to shock the suburbanites out of their tiny little minds. Yeah, bunch of straights. But you know what this show's saving grace is? It's got women in it. Yeah. Uh, our comedy show's nothing without women in it. No. It you... needs the women to break that up. Yeah. Oh, you get sick of laughing. Yeah, but you know, I know women who don't take other women in comedy seriously. Uh, yeah, I know people who laugh at women too. I always get your cynics. Yeah. Like some of the best comedians in the world are women. Oh, yeah, well, what about that? What's her name? Edna Everidge. Yeah, she's great. Is she what? He was a child of the mountains from the cold land of the north. As a boy, he was fed on strudel and sauerkraut. As a young man, he ploughed his way through the black forest cake until he grew up to be the scourge of five continents. Conan the Barbarian. No other could stand his scorn. None could even stand his company. Hey, you! Shut Why are you bleeding so much? Hey! Yo, Billy! You wanna feel some muscle, yeah? Starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as the oversized Obermensch, Conan the Barbarian. Coming soon on DDR Video. Hi, welcome back. Just before I, I read the, uh, the winning uh, letter for this week, the only one I received, uh, there's something I'd, I'd like to say to you on a, on a fairly serious note. The, the ratings came out uh, this week, <laughs> and it, it looks like I'll need a, something more than a standard miracle to, um, to win the Logie this year. But I want to make a promise to you, and I, I make no apologies for this. Uh, if it takes me to the year 2000 AD, uh, I, I will be number one, uh, and I promise you that. But Di is very confident. She thinks I've been doing some of my best work lately, and um, so I'll, I'll give it my best shot. It's not like me to give up. Uh, I don't believe in giving up. I never have and I never will. And I mean that, I mean that very sincerely. Before I read the, uh, this lovely letter, which uh, receives the uh, encouragement award, can we get that camera too? Thanks, Shane. And also this, uh, this delightful 11th hour... I might just drop my photo. Could someone pick that up? Uh, and this delightful um, 11th hour T-shirt, the 11th hour... Can we get that, uh, Jack? The, Shane, the 11th hour, totally rooted in fact. So these are the encouragement awards uh, for uh, the author of this lovely letter. But just before I read it, I'd, I'd like to uh, uh, just make one comment. Um, can I call, call you over here, Steve? Steve, just drop whatever you're doing and come here, will you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Steve Beiser. Thank you. What, uh, I must say, you're looking particularly uh, elegant tonight, Mark. I, Thank you, Steve. And I, I must say, you do too. You look fabulous. Well, really, I feel comfortable. It's actually Naji. Uh, we... Uh, <laughs> What, we, a, what a coincidence. I'm, I'm, actually, that, I'm actually wearing Najee too. We, uh, we happened to pop into Najee today and we took an extensive look at their huge variety of suits, all six of them. 600. 600 of them. Terrific. They feel comfortable, look good. And really, there's nothing in it for us. Thank you, Dion Oman. 
Um, and look at these. <laughs> Can shoes. we get these on uh, camera too? Look, I just got these they, this week. They're, they're, not, in, they're not Mar Emporium shoes, As a matter of fact, are no, they, they are from the Mar Emporium, Melbourne. <laughs> what a what are you wearing? I'm wearing Mar Emporium well, shoes you would too, Look, are they terrific too? Yes. There's nothing in it for us, mind you. Absolutely not nothing. All. all these shoes will be back on the shelf on Monday. Uh, as they were last week. As they week. were last week. Uh, Mark, incidentally, uh, was that 40 seconds? Uh, I think so, just keep on going. Uh, I've got a, a letter that was handed to me. It's a, uh, oh, really? one of your letters. How unrehearsed. It came, in, it came in to me, it was just like that. There we go, it's for you. Oh, thank you, Perhaps Steve. Perhaps you'd like to read it, even on air, perhaps. Fabulous. Well, I, I'd love to, Steve. Thank you thanks, very much. Mark. Terrific. And thanks to Dion Oman for the help I'll just whiz back into, uh, into position. Um, incidentally, if you'd like to, uh, to write to me, um, Shane? Just write, sh thanks Shane, uh, just write to Mark's Mail, care of HSV7, Dorcas Street, South Melbourne, 3205, and I'll, I'll happily, uh, happily receive your letter. Uh, and as I said, the winning uh, letter, the nicest letter I receive each week, will win the Encouragement Awards from me. So if you'll just, pardon me for a moment, I'll just read this. Uh, this really is quite a, a wonderful surprise. Dear Mark, tears of laughter sprang from our joyous eyes as we viewed your marvellous, majestic and magnificent television performance. Your freshness, charm, wit, warmth and timing, that indefinable charisma like an aura surrounding you leapt out and embraced us. Well, I might, the rest is personal, I just... <laughs> I, I just want to thank the, uh, the boys from Parade College, uh, Marsh Brothers and Xavier, uh, for sending this to me. Uh, that's, that's very kind of you and I, I really do appreciate that. Um, actually, I've already selected the, uh, the winning letter for this week, and it's from a, an Annette, um, Annette uh, Jurgensen, I think. Is, it was Jurgensen, wasn't it? Jurgensen. From an Annette Jurgensen. Um, I want to thank Annette very much. Um, I can't read all of the letter on, on the air, um, Annette, as I'm sure you'll understand. Thank you for the photos, by the way. Um, <laughs> so I'll just read a, a few parts of it. Uh, but congratulations, good luck. I'll be seeing you on the Academy Awards. Uh, from now on, I'll be keeping my Friday nights free. Well, thank you very much, Annette, for that. It was really, uh, really quite something. It was wonderful to receive your letter. Uh, so, enough of that. Let's, um, let's go on with the show. There's more entertainment for you. So just sit back, relax, and put yourself completely in our hands. It's great to have your company. One of the eerie things about science fiction is the way in which it becomes science fact. Almost a century ago, H.G. Wells chilled Edwardian readers with his book, The Invisible Man. Now that story has become reality. A reality which differs only in one respect. Our guest tonight is not an invisible man, but an invisible woman. We'll call her Mrs. X. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, Mrs. X. Have you always been invisible? Well, I've, I've always been hard to see. Um, I remember as a child my parents used to talk about me in the third person while I was in the room and then as I got older bits of me started to disappear. Uh, which bits? My head. I found that when I went for a job the boss used to just stare at my chest all the time. And when did you become completely invisible? The day I was married. I'd suspected something when I was left at the bridal table for two hours while people made speeches about my husband. And then a few weeks after we were married, Bob... Bob's your husband? Yes. Um, Bob had just come home from work, drop his coat, kick off his shoes, turn on the telly and sit down, and he didn't see me at all. Not at all? No. One day I was sitting naked and cross-legged on top of the television waiting for him. And I think he must have sensed I was in the room because as he sat down and cracked a tin, he asked the television when his dinner would be ready. And what about other people? Did they not see you either? No, not at all. Bob's friends used to just walk past me and then I saw that I wasn't in any photographs in the photo, family photo album, you know, and, and then my name disappeared. Even your name? Yes, I started getting letters addressed to Mrs Bob Jones. And that's when you knew for certain? No, I, I knew for certain one night when Bob and I were making love and he said to me, I miss you, Julie. And that's when you knew for certain because he was so concerned? No, because my name's Sally. Uh, really? Um, well, I see. What does the future hold for you? Well, Bob and I have split up now and I, I've got a job. A job? What sort of job? I'm a stripper. A stripper? Yes. Yes. I strip for Catholic youth clubs. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Did you see that kid? 
Oh, I'd like to get a brush through that kid's hair. Oh, yes, it's a disgrace. Oh, and look at that. Look at the rig out they get around her. You'd think they'd feel silly, wouldn't you? Yes. Well, you can't go blaming them, can you? Oh, no, you can't. It's the parents' fault. Yes. And all because the women got the vote. That's what I firmly believe. Well, it must have been because the next minute everything's gone mad, hasn't it? Yes, including the kids. Ah, oh, selfish mothers who insist on working. Taking the jobs out of the teenagers' mouths. Yes. You know, most of them can't even be bothered coming home. You know, because they're so busy having affairs. Yes, well, the kiddies are out, left to their own devices. Yes, which reminds me, young Cathy dropped by, had a little boy, eight pounds. Doesn't look a thing like its father. Well, no, they're looking less like their fathers, aren't they? Yes, I don't think there's any need to be explicit as to why that is. No, there isn't. Let's just say it's interesting that they're looking more like their mothers. Well, it's the feminism, isn't it? Indeed it is. Well, they, when their marriages break up, it'll be obvious who's to blame. Though it's not anyone's fault. Oh, no, well, particularly not the men's fault. No. Well, couldn't they? They're victims, aren't they? Well, yes, they are. I mean, they should get the women out of the workforce. You can't expect the men to get the work done with the women thrusting themselves on them all the time, can you? No, it's not in the men's physical makeup to resist. Oh, exactly, and it's different for the men because, of course, they've always had affairs. Yes, you know, and the women are just horning in on something which belongs to the men, really. And you can't blame a man for wanting a woman. Oh, no, well, it's a compliment, really, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, no, they should keep the sex for the bedroom. You know what saddens me? All these good childbearing hips gone to waste. Yes. You know, of course, in our day, you know, we had sex and we had it with our husbands, whether we liked it or not. Yes. Oh, well, that's not counting the American soldiers, of course. Oh, no. Yes, I think it's all this contraception, you know. Make their hormones go funny. Yes. Ben? Mm hmm Do you think we still love each other? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Well, sometimes you seem so preoccupied. Sorry? I think I get it. No, go on. No, why should I bother competing with her? Who? Oh, that girl you're drooling over. I'm not drooling over anyone. I well, saw so, that girl on television. I saw your head, tongue hanging out before. Why would I drool over her? She's, she's... You're much better looking than she is. Oh, crap. What are you talking about? She's very ordinary. You're, you're far more attractive than she is. I don't lie. You are. Yeah, you've not got eyes. I can see. She's a very beautiful girl. So are you. Oh, rubbish. It's not into you. Nothing. It's just that you're stupid. Look, you lose all credibility. She's obviously very beautiful. And you're I'm very not... beautiful. Look, look at this. <laughs> what? This. What? Oh, you... What, what, what do you mean, what? What am I looking at? This happens to be a very big forehead. That is a perfectly ordinary forehead. It is not, Ian. It is a big forehead. It's an ordinary oh, forehead. Don't make me cross. It's obviously a big forehead, Ian. I like big foreheads. Oh, so you admit it is a big forehead? <laughs> it's biggish. Come on, just tell me the truth. I'm 30. I can accept it. Just be honest with me, OK? All right. All right. You've got a big forehead. All well, right? Thank you very much. Well, you told me to tell you. You don't have to do everything I oh! Remember, if you haven't made that call yet, a good divorced lawyer is only as far away as your phone. This has been a community service announcement on behalf of the family court. Well, this week, of course, was the first week of term for Australia's colleges and universities, which means thousands of Australian students are lining up for yet another year of this. What is a poem? What is a poem? Is a bus ticket a poem? Perhaps when seen in a certain light. After all, what is anything? 
what is a university lecturer? Am I a university lecturer? <laughs> no. No, I think not. I am a mental hospital patient. <laughs> but they haven't discovered me yet. And should I tell them? <laughs> no, I think not. Because I'm on $40,000 a year. <laughs> Could you all please write an essay on the topic, what am I doing here, and have it into my office by Friday. Thank you very much. You may go. No! You just go in there and sit down and behave yourself. I'm going down the street and I'll be back in a minute. All right? yeah. It's all right. They've gone. Oh, thank God for that. Uh, well, how are you? Oh, all right, but these tantrums get me down. I know, I have to chuck a huge mental every morning just so my mother won't feel rejected. Oh, they're so dependent, aren't they? I tell you, I thought of a few very cute noises to make yesterday. Oh, yes, what are they? Doggy and moo cow. And what's that word they have for car? Car. I know, broom broom. That's right, I said da da broom broom. They loved it. <laughs> you suck. Yes. Mind if I use it? Certainly not. <laughs> Listen, have you seen Ken recent there? Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's still playing his little games, Pete. Oh, what a bore. What yes, Skippy, jumping. You know. Oh, really? Mm, what about Jody? how's she? Well, I'm quite worried about Jody. Yes? Uh, she's been very naughty lately, forcing her mother to smack her. You know, I think she's developing a smack habit. Mm, mm. Well, that's pretty heavy. You tell me, uh, how's Mandy these days? Oh, pretty down at the mouth at the moment. Yes? Yes, her uh, cabbage patch dog just found out she was adopted. Oh, no, what a bummer. Yes, yes, and Mandy's trying to contact the natural parents at the moment, but, you know, how do you tell your kid it's a toll toy? What a bastard. Yes. Tell me, uh, what have we got this morning? This morning, what's up first? I know, skipping, jumping, clapping, and then playtime, I think. Oh, honestly, I don't think I can cope with this workload much longer. I think I'm going to have to defer skipping. But oh, why not? I mean, Jason's deferred toilet training. He just couldn't keep up with it. Oh, heavens, I just realised that uh, we're supposed to have read Jack and Jill this morning. No, oh, it's OK, Pete. I've got the monarch notes. Oh, and how does it end? Oh, it's pretty silly, really. Um, Jack falls down and receives multiple skull fractures. Oh. Yes, a bit silly. But listen, I want to ask you something. Sally wants to swap me three Hello Kitty key rings for two rubbers. What do you think? Well, rubbers are down at the moment. Are they? I'd wait a few days until the exchange rates improve, if I were okay, you. OK, I'll leave it yes. then. I'll leave it. Mm. Well, what's this afternoon? This afternoon. This afternoon's clubs, and I'm just in so many of them, I can't cope. I mean, there's the Friends of the Milk Bar Society, the uh, I Hate Sharon Club, and, and what's that club where you have to show your bottom to get in? Showing bodies. I know, the Young Liberals. That's right, yes. yes. Have a good time there. Yes. 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 Oh, well, uh, listen, I think they they must be getting pretty worried about us now. I suppose we better go back in. Maybe we better go in. Would you like to be active or passive? Oh, you can hit me this time. Thanks. No, no, <laughs> This week, the headmaster of one of our leading private schools spoke out, Mr Albert Mosley. He angered many people by suggesting that government funding should be withdrawn from government schools and given exclusively to private schools. I'd like to start, uh, Mr. Mosley, and thank you for joining us. I'd like to start by asking you, what is it that private schools teach their students that government schools don't? Arrogance. <laughs> yes. Absolute blind arrogance. Yes, on what is this arrogance based? Would... Education. We teach them to be arrogant, you stupid man. <laughs> Are your children more intelligent? Is that what you're... Of course they're more intelligent. I mean, these children's parents have got money. <laughs> but surely you can't... You, you can't equate wealth and money, surely not. Well, you haven't got much choice when you're trying to raise money for a new science block. In any case, I mean, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a young man's only as intelligent to the extent to which he agrees with me. I mean, I think you'd find most people in power take that view. Why do you need vast sums of money just to teach boys to be like you? So they can do things that the great unwashed can't afford, such as uh, cadets and rowing and trekking trips to the Himalayas. I mean, these boys need the absolute best that money can provide so that they can feel superior to other people and therefore not worry about all the privileges they have. <laughs> Sir, I put it to you that your views are not only objectionable, but most people watching out there would view you as a uh, contemptible, bloated windbag. Would you care to respond to that? Yes, I would. Bend over. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, this is my show. We'll just cut that there, I think. Thanks very much. All right. Sack him! <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I quite agree. <laughs> I really think it's the only way. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> now that's a bit more like it. Oh, no, you're not wrong. Oh, God, it's Amy. Oh, God, I can feel it. Oh. Well, that's funny. <laughs> Singing the crystal ball for our viewers this week, Lead. Baggins, baggins, baggins at Lennon Ken's Astrology Discount Store. We're sacrificing Lennon Ken's pumpkin patch voodoo dolls. Ideal for the bricks in your life. Lennon Kenny's voodoo dolls. Up they go at only $15.99. Contact the dad. And win money at the same time. Lenny and Ken's convertible Ouija bingo board. Clickety click, six, six, six. Only $19.99. Blow up zombies. I do. Lennon Ken's inflatable living dead with puncher kit. She'll be a friend to you as well. Sacrifice coming up. Try Lennon Ken's Swiss Army Stay Sharp Sacrificial Dagger. Comes complete with four. 14 folding attachments, stabs virgins, vampires, minces, slices, dices, all for $14.99. Hungry? Mm, try Lennon Ken's sacrificial chicken snack pack. Don't forget aphrodisiac punch. Brew it yourself. With Lennon Ken's Witch's Brewing Kit at home. It'll put hairs on the palms of your hand. No worries at all. Change your star sign. Yeah, with Lennon Ken's star sign conversion kit. Customise your star this sign. This kit fits all makes of star signs from Libras to Leo's, only $99.99. Sick of the same old holiday. Make your next holiday one you won't forget. And try astral travel with Lennon Ken's Cosmos Discovery Tour. No jet lag. No jet. And with every astral travel trip sold this week, we'll give away not one but two free packs of Lennon Ken's AO Playboy Nudie Tarot Cards. <laughs> Featuring Valerie the Virgo. For customer. Think astrology, oh, think. think. Land and Ken Zodiac yeah, Astrology really Wizards. Wizards. You'll thank your lucky stars. stars. Good one. Beautiful. 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 Lovely stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah, friends. Tis easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. You know, friends, these words have struck fear into the heart of many a rich man. And many a camel, Brother Ted. It's Leroy. You know, friends, I had a letter from a man, a millionaire, only this week saying, How, given my wealth, my swimming pools, my big shiny red Cadillac, can I hope to pass into the kingdom of God? Do not despair, O ye of little faith, for the answer to your problem lies simply in the judicious setting up of appropriate family trusts. We at Resurrection Investment Planning RIP have developed several investment strategies based on scriptural loopholes for the rich man who wants to be sure and pass through the eye of that old needle. Praise the Lord, Brother Ted, but please tell me, how can I avail myself of this great financial and spiritual opportunity? Please tell me how it works, Ted. I'm glad you asked, Leroy. It's a simple three-step program. Step one, choose from our singles, family savers, or Christmas club plan. Step two, when you hear the beat, beat, beating of the wings of the angel of death, you give old Ted, I mean Reverend Ted here, a ring on the glory hotline. And step three is we administer the extreme unction. You sign a simple form, transferring all your property into a corporate trust administered by us. Sounds simple. So the time Olson Peter gets his calculator out, you're gonna be buried in a baby's ass. Remember, why should the poor have a monopoly on poverty? Saturday night, it's a star-studded event as a host of celebrity guests pay tribute when David Longy roasts Ronnie Regan. I regret those moves. They are serious and they will, to a degree, be damaging. We in Britain think you are a wonderful president. Mr. Barming and Five Minutes. The Ronnie Regan Roast is Saturday night on 7. Good evening and welcome to Let's Talk. Tonight, a language that is probably the language of the 80s. It's one that you must know if you go to a gymnasium, modern dance classes, or a singles bar. It's the language of the quest for eternal youth. That's right. Tonight, let's talk health. Why have I joined a health club? Well, I'm concerned about my cardiovascular capacity in contrast to my height-weight ratio with relevance to fitness in my everyday energy expenditure. I'm looking for a new place to meet girls. 
I've just finished a five lap warm up high resistance Nautilus circuit on maximum repetition, including bench press, wrist curls, lat pulls, car phrases with a calisthenic peak and a free weight tail off. Get me to a physiotherapist immediately. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, when it comes down to it, you just can't beat aerobics for that maximization of the old respiratory system in relation to the old cardiovascular workload. The aerobics teacher has enormous breasts. <laughs> Uh, of course diet's important. I'm in a low-salt, high-protein format, but I'm gearing up for an 80k triathlon alpine fun run, so I'm maximising my amino acids and I'm super-loading with the carbohydrate. I'm about to pig out on cheesecake. <laughs> Hell, I know it's a commitment, but there are just some sacrifices that you just have to make if you want to stay healthy. I sold the Porsche to buy my running suits. <laughs> All right, that's the basics of it. Now let's have a look at some of the key phrases that you should know. Gymnasium, a building that closes down one week after you've paid a four-year subscription. <laughs> Member, a person who has just lost $500. Life member, a person who has just mortgaged their house. <laughs> Dumbbell, both of the above. <laughs> Velour tracksuit, Something to go shopping in. Solarium, a microwave for humans. Spa, a 200 gallon bacterial incubator. Aerobic respiratory maximization unit, a skipping rope. Respiratory peak, a heart attack. Fun run, a contradiction in terms. Well, we hope you've enjoyed your lesson in Let's Talk Health. Next week, back again with another language for you. Bye-bye for now. Capriciousa with a lot? For 2,000 years I have waited. 2,000 long years. Yeah, well, I got a bit of a puncture on the bike. Sorry, I'm late. Silence, fallen one! It was ordained in the temple of Yachnatai in the great book of Dubaba that you would come here tonight to usurp my omniscient, all-powerful reign over the planets. What say you, Flock Nictibar? Uh, Capriciosa. Strange things have happened here tonight. Strange and unnatural things. The fish have walked on the water. The cock has crowed. The barren tree has borne the fruit of human flesh. These things that was ordained would happen today. On this day, the 26th day of the second month. It's the 24th. For 2,000 years, I have worked out different torches for you every night to extract pain from your hideously compromised Babactica. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. I brought this pizza around here in very good faith. And now it is time that you must give me the torch of bricks. The torch of bricks! <laughs> I don't know. Silence! Jackal before I summon the wings of Yakmandra to pluck your eyeballs from their sockets and send scorching fires through your hot bowels. Look, if I don't get back to the shop soon, I'm in really big trouble. Give me the torch of bread. Uh, what? The torch of bread, give it to me, you heard me. The torch that makes him an immortal, that gives him power over the beasts of the field. <laughs> Oh, the, the torch of bricked. <laughs> I left it clipped on the bike. I'll just be a moment. Wait! You have fooled me once before in ancient Babylon. <laughs> Do you not remember the Pitzgar of Bobulabar? No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, the Pitzgar of Bobulabar. <laughs> Those were the days, weren't they? <laughs> Silence, it matters not. Leave the magic disc. 
as a surety for your soul. The, the what? The magic disc. Leave it. Oh, the magic disc. Yes, <laughs> capriccioso with the lot, thank you. Of course, I'll just leave it. I'll be right back. I won't be a second after all. You've got the magic disc. <laughs> Oh, I'll get a serviette. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I don't know, it's stuffed my voice. Has anyone got any strap souls? I don't know. Yes, I've got some. <laughs> some. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm Alan Funt, and welcome to Candid Camera. That's the show where we catch people doing unnatural acts in unnatural places. Well, tonight's Candid Classic is a beauty. It's one of my all-time favorites. We call it the Amputee Stunt. Now, what we did for the Amputee Stunt, we took a group of guys who were going into hospital for an operation, simple operation, toes, tonsils, appendix. And what we did, unbeknownst to them, is while they were under the anesthetic, remove their legs. Now, we had a camera planted in the post-operative recovery room to catch the looks on their faces when they were coming out of the anesthetic. Now, imagine, if you will, the look on someone's face when they're waking up and they find they've still got their tonsils, but their legs are missing. This is terrific. Let's just have a look and see what happened on this week's Candid Classic. Now this guy, this guy was coming in for an ingrown toenail. He's coming around, he's looking down there, looking for the toenail. No legs. Now look at that. Where's that toe gone? He's got real problems. Ha <laughs> ha, dear, that was funny. Now this guy, here's a good one. This guy wakes up, and the first things he wants to do is go to the toilet. So he gets up, and whoops, no legs. Ha <laughs> ha, dear, that's a beauty. Now, here's my all-time favorite. This guy's a panic merchant. He's woken oh up, and he can't believe he's bad luck. I'm sure it's my tonsils. Oh Let's my see how he responds when he finds the whole thing's a joke. Let's just see how he behaves. What seems to be the problem? My legs are bigger. I don't want my legs. Now, hang on. Let's just get this right. They've cut your legs off. Yes, and you came in here for tonsillectomy, yeah. and they've cut your legs off at the stump, so you'll never be able to walk no. again. Is that what you're saying to me? Yeah, I'm you? talking to God, my well, legs! there seems to be some sort of mistake here. I don't know how that could happen. It's a, it's a terrible mistake. They could probably put some sticks on the oh, No! My legs! My, my legs! I want them back! Michael, Michael, do you watch television? There's a show on 6 o'clock on Sunday's National. You're Alan Fun. That's right, my friend. You're on camera. There's a camera just over there behind that screen. Oh, my, I saw And everybody's going to be watching. I Isn't saw that the legs. I should have guessed. You came in for the tonsils. You haven't got any legs, but you're going to be on National. You're a swell Oh, thank you. You're a swell one. Fun, everybody. You should have guessed. I can't believe this. He's swell. Terrific. This guy's a sport. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, dear. Wasn't that terrific? That guy was a great sport. Terrific. I hope he's getting on okay in his chair. That's terrific. Look, until next week, we're going to put our camera back in a hiding. And don't be surprised if sometime, somehow, someplace, someone comes up to you and says, Smile. We just burnt your house down and abducted your children. Bye for now. <laughs> Dear. Well, that's all we have from the 11th hour for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for more Coco for the Cranium. But as we go, one last guest to introduce. He's from America. He's out here at the request of the Australian Chamber of Commerce. His job is making people feel good. So let's give him a big welcome, ladies and gentlemen, America's top motivationalist positivity expert, Mr. Johnny Blausvik. <laughs> You're thinking this man oozes success. <laughs> You're right, I do, because I'm positive. When I get into a lift, I sing along with the music. I think that's important. As you think, so shall it be. I have here a cup. Is this cup full or empty? Come on, tell me. Empty. You're all losers. This cup is filled to overflowing with life-sustaining air. And this very realization could save you from drowning in negativity. 
If you say that one day you are going to be a success, then you're saying that in this plane, in this, the only reality, you are a failure. You are a loser. <laughs> success will come to you only when you believe you are a success. Am I getting through to you? When I wake up in the morning, I say, good morning, God. Most of you wake up and you say, good God, morning. <laughs> you've got to be positive. You've got to give it your best shot and believe that on the invisible and the visible plane, you've made it. On the invisible plane, I have $100 million. I've only got to live through it now. <laughs> Think about it. You too can be a success when you accept that you already are a success. Then it will come to you like a magnet, as it's come to me. Everywhere I go, people smile at me. They smile at me and I smile back at them because I know the secret, as above, so below, as you think, so shall it be. Whatever you want, you can have. If you really want it, you'll get it. And you don't need women, you don't need booze, you don't need drugs or pleasure of any kind, as I have demonstrated, and I do demonstrate in my life every day. <laughs> you don't need any of those things. You've just got to be positive. You've got to give it your best shot. Which camera am I on? <laughs> and you've got to know, you've got to know in your own heart that you are a winner. And then winning will come to you. When you accept that you are a success, when you accept that you are dying, when you accept that death is something you've got to live through, then you will begin to understand exactly what success really means. Think about that. I want to say to you something.